Want to add a pretty detail to your homemade clothes? Bias binding is useful for creating a neat finish on seams that aren't attached to anything else and don't have a facing. The bias cut will allow the binding to stretch lightly, which is handy for getting around curves such as armholes and necklines. For example, the armholes below the cap sleeve on our Etta dress sewing pattern, the back underarms and straps of our Fifi camisole, and the underarms and neckline of our new Sky sundress, which I'll be sewing in this video. You can buy ready-to-made bias binding relatively easily, but it's good to know how to make it yourself so you can make it in a print, colour and width of your choice. It's also a great fabric stash buster. So here's how to make it. You'll need a bias binding maker for the method I'm going to show you first, but a bias binding maker isn't an essential tool and I'll also show you how to make bias binding without one, just using your iron instead. You can get these handy tools in different sizes. I'm using a 12mm or half an inch one, perfect for my sky sundress which will make single fold bias binding that is 12mm wide once finished. You'll also need a large piece of fabric and a light to medium weight woven cotton. I'm using a piece of leftover lilac cotton poplin fabric to make mine in this video. Like I said, making your own bias binding can be a great way to use up your fabric scraps. Fold your fabric on the bias grain, which is at a 45 degree angle to the self edges, so the self edges are lined up with the crosswise grain. Use a ruler or pattern master, like I am, to draw your strips parallel to the fold, the width being double the width of the maker you're using, so mine are roughly 24mm. Or if you're making a sky dress like I am, the pattern comes with a handy template for your cutting your bias binding. Cut along these lines to create your strips. If you have a rotary cutter and a cutting mat, it'll be much quicker than scissors. Cutting the strips on two layers of fabric means that you can cut two strips at once. Make enough strips so the total length is a bit more than you need for your binding. Cut the ends of each strip so they create a right angle. Place one strip over another so the ends are right sides together at a 90 degree angle. Imagine the area where the two strips cross as a square. Now use a chalk pencil or washable pen to draw a diagonal line across this square. I've popped a pin in mine here creating a triangle shape at the outer corner. Stitch along this line to join the strips, back tacking at each end. Trim the triangular outer corner, leaving a 10mm seam allowance. Press the strips apart and press the seam allowances open. Do the same thing with the other strips until you have one long strip. Lay the strip wrong side up on an ironing board and turn your iron on. With the bias binding maker flat or metal side down, Feed one end of the strip through the wide end of it. You may need to poke it through with a pin or small scissors. It can be quite fiddly. Then pull the maker away from the end and folded fabric should come out the other side. Checking the raw edges are centred, follow the path of the maker with your iron, pressing the binding as it comes out of the maker to set the folds in place. To create bias binding without a maker tool, follow our instructions until you have your one long binding strip ready for pressing. Then take your long strip and press the binding in half lengthways, wrong sides together. Open it out again, then fold each raw edge into the centre and press. This is your finished single fold bias binding. Now you're ready to attach your binding to your lovely garment. 